Hello Mario friends, how is it going? I'm Mario Ferriger and today I'm going to talk about some runic magic formulas that were quite popular during the Iron Age in Northern Europe. The other day uh, I have done uh, that video in response to Jackson Crawford concerning the runes and the idea that such characters are only letters which I disagree by stating they are also symbols with a magical religious character and I've given a couple of examples on that video and on that same video I have talked about two very important or very popular runic formulas Alu and Laukar or Laukas. So today I would like to go a little bit further on that subject concerning popular magic runic formulas and charms. Today I shall speak about Aoya, Lothu and briefly Laukar or Laukas again. It will be mostly concerning the first two because on another video where I focused on the runic magic charm Alu, I've also taken the opportunity to speak of Laukas because um, these two come together quite often so I don't think it will be necessary to focus too much on that one again. As such I will only briefly touch on a few points that might have escaped me on uh, that particular previous video. So. Let us go straight to it, shall we? My dear friends, if you please. Oh yeah, it's a word that appears on some artifacts which doesn't have a particular direct meaning of the word, but it may have a symbolic connotation in the sense of divine protection or generally hail or good luck. What I mean by not having a direct meaning of a word is that it isn't possible to translate into a specific word, like the case of the runic charm Alu, which means ale, and from there we understand to be a direct reference to an element that was important in religious ceremonies, feasts, um, a product for several that, that served as a magical religious purpose, of several magical religious purposes as well. Which becomes then a word that reports to the idea of blessing, offering a protective charm whose cultural and religious meaning lies in a medium, in a product, in an element for communication between humans and between human and divine or supernatural. But unlike Aulu, Aoya instead seems to be a rather complex idea that gives this sense of transmitting this idea of divine protection either to the wearer of the object that contains such, such a term, such an inscription, or to whom an object is dedicated to. The word Aoya eventually disappeared and its meaning can only be guessed at, unfortunately, so there isn't a continuous use of the term which indeed doesn't give us many clues about its uses and purposes and meanings uh, through the course of time because eventually it has fallen into disuse and the linguistic and cultural evolutions ceased to have a link in the case of this word. However, part of it, the name element O, appears to have been retained in place names and personal names, some personal names. The Vimus buckle, found in Vimus, <laughs> Denmark, has Awia instead of Aoya, showing the West uh, Germanic gemination of W before J uh, with the possible meaning of to favor or to help. Hence Aoya often being interpreted as luck, fortune, wealth. There's a very good example as well, a bracteate from Sealand dating from around 500 of the Common Era, migration period. I don't know exactly the runic inscription in its fullest because I may have a lot of information inside my head but I'm not on that level of nerd, not yet at least, so I'll put it on the screen. Although I know it hands with Geibo, Aoya, uh, something between the lines of I give luck or to give luck or wealth or I give chance or I give happiness. I know this particular finding, like many others, ends with a triple there was rune resembling the symbology of a tree, which could very well be a visual representation of a sacred tree. So I take the opportunity to show you yet another example that gives us a concrete evidence that the runes were not just letters but also symbols. And here it is, a triple there was linked to itself, which could also be in the sense that 
the hat of Thewas is repeated twice, uh, again along the length of the shaft, uh, which in itself can be the representation of the deity Thewas, an important migration period sky deity, the, the god of the skies. So the runes here indicate a sacred symbol, a visual representation of the sky god to reinforce this sense of protection and good luck by evoking the deity itself with its symbolic representation. Again, another evidence that the runes were not just letters, but symbols as well, with a strong magical religious character to them and could even represent deities. So take that, Jackson Crawford. I'm just kidding, obviously. Um, I have the utmost respect for the man and um, I follow his work and in my opinion he's a very reliable source of, source of information, but that doesn't mean I always agree with him. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> another good example is the Skodbog Bracteate, which has Aoya, Aoluin, repeated three times, uh, which is quite common, repeating phrases, runic charms or runes three times. It is the charms effect giving repetition uh, a number of times, which are considered to be sacred and to express the effect more clearly. In this case, Aoya Aoluin is luck to Aoluin, possibly. It has been interpreted as be lucky Halloween three times, ending with the names Halloween and Alwith, uh, which appear to be the names of semi-divine heroes, perhaps a evocation or invoking the luck these figures can give, although such names mean great friend and great wife, uh, respectively, either being um, addressing forms, uh, reinforcing the command to have or give luck, or to be lucky. But the final J rune uh, that seems to come alone uh, appears to also be one of the cases I've spoken on the previous video of single runes used as symbols to represent a term or idea. In this case, the isolated J is taken as the rune Yaran, meaning good year. Ala means all, Wim means friend, and Wed means large. There's another possible interpretation, interpretation, sorry. Um, it is the wishing of good luck three times to all friends throughout the year, or, or, or may the year be prosperous. J, Alwin, a large, prosperous all year round, right? So, Aoya belongs to a special category of words that are typical of Germanic amulets, making it a magical name or magical word or magical term. If we take into consideration that such words mainly come in Bracteates and these objects themselves having been a Roman cultural influence, I think such words can be compared to the Latin voces ma magicae, which were usually nonsensical words, which were used in spells, charms and amulets to enhance their magical potency precisely. So it may be a case of that. Words that don't need a particular meaning and cannot be translated, they are quite nonsensical, but they have a sense of power. Power of the voice, evocation, incantation, the sense of expressing power and command through the voice and repetition of such words to give it magical potency. Again, as I said on the previous video, uh, this is about the anthropology of religions. It's not about us in our own current society and our own beliefs. It's not about if you believe in magic or not right now in your own society. It's about the, the, what, what these people believed in, in their own time, society, religious understandings and belief systems and the belief in magic and the power of words and objects which have a clear intention to be magical in nature, as we see in these artifacts, to become charms, amulets, magical objects. Now, the next one, Lotho, which seems to suggest a culling, invitation or summons to summon, summoning, perhaps referring to the act of making an offering or the initiation of a particular cult or into a particular cult, as in culling upon the presence of whatever supernatural forces, beings or the divine into the moment of the cult or the action of offering. Culling the spirits to be present or culling that which is required to be present or towards whom the offering or religious conduct goes. 
Therefore, it is the word that in itself is an invitation. The word lauto only appears on brachiates, so it appears uh, that this word of power, this vocal expression to call upon and invite, has fallen into disuse after the migration period, uh, most likely a change of religious perceptions or this act in itself ceased to exist and may have been replaced by some other word or simply not used at all in later periods. And let me check my little paper. <laughs> a good example is one of the Darum brackets, of course, uh, which reads Frohila or Frodila Lautho, uh, the god Freyr, uh, whose name also means the Lord and then uh, invitation or summons, or summoning this god. There are several instances uh, in many cultures of uh, calling upon the gods by name uh, to come or to be summoned, to be present, evocation of a deity's name, and then proceeding with the request of or the offering or any cultic or religious performance towards the entity that has been called upon and so invoked as well. So here in this particular finding it is to call upon the god Freud uh, a written form of the summons, um, invitation of the deity, and that alone in itself uh, is the magic charm to have the presence of the deity in a charm for whichever purposes, to have the object as a charm, an amulet that evokes the deity and eventually invokes. And there's another, another interesting one saying, Nuila Lothu, novice, uh, the newcomer, invocation. Uh, to this newcomer or the novice, or wel to welcome this novice. Just as Aulu from a previous video, uh, the words Aoya, Lauthu and Laukas or Laukar, uh, represent well-known amuletic or charm expressions, uh, not with particular clear meanings, but rather words of power to express a magical religious intention. And to finalize this video, uh, another good example, um, a bracket that says Lothu, Laukar, Laukas, Gaukar, Gaukas, Aulu. Uh, of this one I have spoken on another video. Uh, we are not dealing here today with Gaukar, uh, but well, Gaukar uh, is interpreted as Gauka, the cuckoo bird. So it is something between the lines of evocation or invitation of Laukas, licks, and followed by cuckoo magic, Gaukar, Gaukas, Aulu. So the term Gaukas can also be an imitative word connected with a word for the cuckoo, derived from an imitation of the noise that the bird makes. As for the term Laukar or Laukas, uh, it is the term lick in this particular context might be supposed to indicate that the pendant is a fertility amulet or a charm supposed to be related or, or related to or inducing sexual love or desire, making the term Lauthu and Aulu generic charm words to give potency to the intention, the invocation of magic or uh, respectively, of the sexual desire, fertility, sexual potency, love or desire marked with the cry of the bird that could be a sort of chant. But then lick as I've stated on the previous video concerning the runic magic term Alu, could also indicate sexual potency here, making the amulet um, a powerful charm of physical potency to do the sexual act, sexual intercourse, which in a way the potency and success of the act itself leads to fertility. Perhaps an amulet to be used on such occasions, either to improve the sexual performance or to result in pregnancy or both. So, let us take a quick look and let, it, let me remind you of a few things concerning the Lokar or Lokas magic term. Now, the runic magic term or charm expression Lokar or Lokas, I'm not going to repeat what I said about it on the video dealing with the runic magic formula Alu, as both Alu and Lokas often come together and were by far the favorite terms of Roman Iron Age among Germanic cultures. But I will add extra information that I think it may come to be useful, hopefully. Lokas seems to have both magical or ritual connotations, possibly in connection with fertility and growth, as I've stated on that previous video, and why it has these connotations. 
along with uh, possibly uh, particular necromantic pragmatic behaviors. Having this word on an amulet uh, more often than not seems to point to the desire of protection against evil or protection against destruction of some kind. Lauk, Lik, or its early Germanic form Laukas, is commonly found on early runic amulets. It is usually assumed that an isolated L rune in an amulet text represents the charm word Laukas, and some examples demonstrate the, um, the, the two most famous formulas, Alu and Laukas, by the appearance of the full word Alu followed by an L rune, a single rune representing the runic charm itself, Laukas. There are some interesting examples, such as the Schulstrup uh, uh, Bracteate, uh, where we see both Laukas and Alu. Uh, in the word Laukas, the K and A runes are often together, forming a binary rune to save up space to compress the magic term within the charm. And uh, I take the opportunity to say uh, why I pronounce it either as Laukas or Laukar. Uh, it's because of the final rune. R represents the rune al -Yis, which was pronounced as Z during the ancient Germanic period, and then gradually became pronounced as R. Uh, the sound change probably occurred around the 5th century of the Common Era. So this symbol, this runic symbol R, uh, means therefore that it should be pronounced as Z if we want to use the pronunciation of ancient Germanic times, therefore Laukas, and as R, a more guttural R, I think, uh, if instead we pronounce it like in the times of the late Scandinavian Iron Age, the so called Viking Age, so therefore Laukach. And one of my favorite examples is the Fluxon. Bone knife, of course, found in Norway, which reads Lina Lokar or Lokas, and the Feu rune at the end, linen and lick, or linen and onion, or garlic, and the fertility but mostly wealth rune at the end. There isn't a consensus here if it is garlic, onion, or lick, or all the above. Perhaps the idea here is the, the, the similar properties of such elements and referring to the supposed preserving qualities of the combination of linen or flask, and garlic, leek or onion, as it is suggested in the Volsa Thother tale, of which I have spoken of on that other previous video, uh, which I hope you see it, for more information on this fertility charm linked to necromancy and preservation of body parts, some very specific body parts. But I think it is important to refer to ancient folklore, at least in Europe that I know of, in which the onion was a protection against disease and spells. So there may be here this intention of protection as well. But certainly, um, taking this formula into context, Laukas is connected with fertility, sexuality, to invocation, charms, protection, sexual potency and preservation. And in the case of the Fluxan bone knife, it seems to be implicit a wish or of abundance or wealth as the charm ends with the Feu rune. But I do hope you watch the, the previous video concerning the Alu charm, not because I want views, <laughs> which helps this channel to grow, obviously, but because you may find useful information on that particular video, uh, both concerning the Laukach or Laukas charm, but also this link with the Volsa author account uh, in necromantic but also fertility and sexual magical terms, right? So let us end this video here to avoid repetition. My dear friends, thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video, and as always, talk for you Thanks for today, obrigado por hoje. Until we meet again.